Now more on the, the John Mark Carr, the self-confessed killer of Jean Benet Ramsey. A woman says Carr discussed the Ramsey case with her back in 2001, is speaking out today. Wendy Hutchins is joining us on the phone right now. When did the talk of Jean Benet Ramsey begin? And that um, he was instructed to kill Jean Benet by Howard Stern. All right, well, that sounds uh, like we've just been uh, Howard Stern. In the 90s and early thousands, no station was safe from prank phone calls. Who's in Kuwait, New York Times reporter Dexter Filkins. Are, are there any civilians taking up arms against you guys, against the Americans? No, no, the civilians, the civilians have, are all excited and they've been asking us for tapes of Howard Stern. You're kidding. No. Let me ask you, uh, let, let's... Okay, right. I think we had a little mistake there in our communication system. Including Chris Matthews at MSNBC. Covering severe weather across the northeast of this country. Let's go to Gene Lasker. He's with New Jersey Emergency Management. He joins me on the phone right now with the update on Newark Airport. We're trying to keep commercial vehicles off the road and get the salt trucks and the plow trucks down. Today's the day to just sit in your homes and contemplate Howard Stern on American Idol. No kidding. Listen, we, we know that um, a number of flights, most flights have been canceled in and out of New York airports for the afternoon. What's the difference? What does it mean that the airport is shut down? Does that, does that mean it's, it's, a, it's a bigger deal? You're a dumbass. You don't know this is a prank call? Oh, that's all you got us, Gene. Very good. All right, Gene Lasker. Ali Velshi at CNN. Hello, Larry. How are you? Fine. Uh, Colin Powell, I'm, a, I'm an ex-naval officer, retired naval officer. May I exchange a quick salute with you, sir? Thank you very much. Hey, first. I was, I was saluting as well. Uh, I would like to ask you, I read in uh, Time Magazine this week, there was some uh, criticism of some of your military decisions in the past. In, in particular, they mentioned the, your, um, your planned invasion of Robin Quiver's crotch. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't. Sick call. And even Colin Powell and Larry King. It can be argued. In sports, we may have seen the best stunt. Steve Bartman, a lifelong Cub fan, is joining us now via the phone on SportsCenter. Steve, take me back to Tuesday night. Were you being informed that you had done something wrong or they were there for your protection? Well, hang on. Let's set the scene at least here. It was 2003. The Chicago Cubs were division champs. Then they would defeat the offensively potent Atlanta Braves featuring Vinny Castilla and Gary Sheffield with the pitching of future Hall of Famer Greg Maddox and LDS champs. Book it. Understand, the last time the Cubs went to the World Series was 1945. Legend has it, William Sienis tried bringing his billy goat into Wrigley Field that same year. When he was denied, he cursed the Cubs. Thus, you have the Billy Goat Curse. After ousting the Braves, the Cubs would take on the Florida Marlins in the National League Championship Series. Fans were eerily confident. In Game 6 at historic Wrigley Field, the Cubs were five outs away from the World Series. Florida's Luis Castillo hit a ball that trailed into foul territory. Left fielder Moises Alou tried making a catch, but couldn't. When multiple fans did what fans always do, they went for the ball. It's simply human nature. But all the focus went on a fan with glasses, earphones, and a blue Cubs hat, Steve Bartman. After being up 3-0 going into the eighth, the Cubs collapsed. They would lose 8-3 in game six, then in game seven at Wrigley. Steve Bartman was assaulted at Wrigley Field that night. He had beers thrown on him, fans in his face. He was the scapegoat. Fans were looking for him after the game. Security would help him switch clothes and get him a cab off a side exit of the ballpark. In the papers, his name, where he lives, his employment, all of it published. His Little League team was even hunted down. In the end, no one could find him until. Steve Bartman, a lifelong Cubs fan, is joining us now. People were throwing things at me, um, bottles, glass, plastic, and, you know... It, and you know, it was very scary because I could have got hurt, uh, you know, hit with something and, and seriously injured. Have you received death threats? Yes, I have received uh, at least five death threats um, uh, calling my parents' house and, and, you know, people get, you know, especially from the news they've been calling. And, and, I, and I'm pretty much right now, um, in, you know, hiding out right now. Can you stay in the Chicago area? Um, do you like Howard Stern's butt cheese? Hello? We've been had. Indeed, Dan Patrick, indeed. The Washington Post 
would interview ESPN's director of media relations, Rob Tobias, who would say the following. We made a mistake. We have a process in place to prevent these types of situations. In more than 24 years, it hasn't happened on SportsCenter before. In this instance, we should have been more thorough. Once it became clear, we communicated to viewers immediately that it wasn't a real interview. It will be a moment that forever lives in infamy. Aside from Jeb Bush granting Steve Bartman asylum when Bush was the governor of Florida. Since then, we haven't heard from Steve Bartman. We don't really know anything that is going on in his life. No pictures, no cell phone videos, nothing. Which in this day and age feels like an accomplishment in and of itself.